In this video, we're going to show you how to replace the engine oil cooler on your Nissan Rogue located on the back side of your engine. So we have to remove our center cap here, reach behind that and pull outward. Using a 21 millimeter socket, let's go ahead, loosen and remove these lug nuts. Go ahead and grab that wheel. Remove it and set it aside. From underneath the vehicle, you want to go ahead and access the oil pan. There are two pans underneath. One is the transmission pan. The one to the right side, passenger side, is the oil pan. So make sure we drain this one here. Using our 14 millimeter socket, have your catch can underneath. Okay, give that a quick wipe down. I want to get and torque down the drain plug bolt here to 25 foot pounds. Right up underneath the bumper here, there is going to be a drain plug for our radiator. You can use a flathead or a Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and slowly open that up. Have your drain pan ready to go. Now with the radiator pretty much drained out, you want to go ahead and take your drain plug, inspect the O-ring on here, make sure that is in good condition. If that is flattened out, torn, or shredded in any way, you have to replace that now. Ours is in good condition. Let's go ahead and reinstall this here. We'll snug that up into position here. Once that bottom's out, just give it a little bit more. Wipe down the residual here. We're gonna remove this side cover here. We're gonna use our trim tool and we're gonna try and pop the center of these buttons out. And then pull the retainers. These plastic buttons here, they should come out with your trim tool. Ours is literally just crumbling apart. Now, if yours are crumbling apart like ours, you're going to want to go ahead and source some replacement buttons. Again, getting access through the wheel well here. I'm going to go ahead to this connector. On the top side of it is going to be a little spring clip. You're simply going to push on the top of that. Wiggle that and pop that off. I'm going to go ahead and remove that sensor. Use our 27 millimeter socket. Now we do have a catch can underneath the vehicle to catch any residual fluids that might be coming out. Yeah, loosen that and remove it. On the back side of the oil cooler, there are two coolant hoses. We're gonna gain access to one of them from the wheel well area. We wanna go ahead and slide back the clamp using some pliers. Now we do have a catch can underneath the vehicle to catch residual coolant that can come out of this.
The second hose in the back is tougher to get to, so we're gonna get that clamp and hose off once we unbolt the oil cooler from the engine itself. Now, in order to remove our oil cooler, there's gonna be four bolts. They're 12 millimeter that we need to remove to pull this off. It's gonna be one here, 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 and here. Once we get those four bolts out, we're gonna go ahead and remove the last coolant hose that is on the top of it. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so we have one here. We have all four of these loose. Let's see if we can spin those out. Now they're gonna be three short bolts and one long one. And that long one is located up on top here, right beside where the pressure switch would be. Now when we separate the oil cooler, there's gonna be a small gasket back there, so you wanna pay attention to that. And we still have one hose attached to it in the back. So let's drop that oil cooler. Here is that gasket right here. Let's go ahead and get that clamp on the back hose here. I'm gonna use a pair of long needle nose pliers to gain access to this. I'll go ahead and move that clamp back. Then I use my hose pliers. See if I can get on there. With that second hose removed, we can now go ahead and remove the cooler from the vehicle. Now, before we install the oil cooler, we want to go ahead and clean off the surface right here. Prepare this for our new gasket as well. Just wipe it down, make sure it's clean and dry. Let's go ahead and get the oil cooler hose reattached. I'm gonna go ahead and feed our oil cooler up and into position. Let's go ahead and get that hose installed. Now that we have that one hose installed there, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the unit up into place, get our gasket in there, and get the bolts installed. Now you wanna go ahead and use the new gasket. You wanna replace that. I'm gonna put the long bolt in to the unit here, slide that through. And I'm just gonna get that started a few threads by hand. Once we have that starter, that's gonna line up the part and the gasket for the other three bolts. We'll go ahead and get those started by hand as well. Now that we have all four bolts in, let's go ahead and snug them all down.
good and torque these down to 21.6 pounds. Do that for the other three. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and grab that other hose up top and get that installed. Let's go ahead and get that hose installed. Now we went ahead and we added some thread tape sealant to our switch here. Go ahead and get that threaded in. And once that sensor starts to get some resistance on it, you should be good. At that point there, and grab that switch harness right here. I'm going to line that up, snap that into place. We'll install our side cover. I want to go ahead and grab your original clips if you have them. Take your wheel, line it up, get that set on, and let's go ahead and install all the lug nuts by hand. Get them started a few threads. Once we have all those started, let's go ahead and snug those down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds. Once you're all torqued down, install your center cap. You're going to pay attention to the notch here on the cap. That's where your valve stem is going to go. Go ahead and locate your oil fill cap right here. I'm going to grab the funnel, make sure it's a nice clean funnel. Now this engine takes 4.9 quarts of oil, Take into consideration the amount of oil that you did put into the oil filter already. Use the appropriate oil that is recommended for this engine. I'm going to add four and a half quarts of oil on the top end here. I want to go ahead and start the engine, let it run for about 10 to 15 seconds. We'll go ahead and check the oil level and add as necessary. Let's go ahead and check that oil level. All 
or a level is closer to the top dot here on the level, and that is perfect. I want to go ahead and fill up our radiator here, going to use the appropriate coolant required from the manufacturer. Now at this point here, once we have our radiator filled up, I'm going to go ahead and remove our fill tools here. Let's go ahead and get our radiator cap installed. Let's go ahead and fill up our expansion tank. Now on the passenger side of the engine, you're going to find the expansion tank here. I'm going to go ahead and add coolant to this here. There is a max and min line on the side of the tank. So you want to go ahead and slowly fill this here and watching that line. Now our max line right now is the actual seam on the tank. There's a max line right there. Min or minimum is at the lower portion of the tank. So we went ahead and filled to that seam and go ahead and remove our funnel, put on that cover. Now at this point here, you want to go ahead and start up the vehicle, let it run for about 15, 20 minutes, let the engine warm up. Then at that point there, you want to go ahead and check the expansion tank here. If that has dropped down, the level has dropped down, go ahead and open this up and add accordingly to this tank here. Never open up the radiator cap when it's hot. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.